Hello, I am Sujoy and I welcome you to part 2 of my video on applications of simplex method by shortcut technique. In the first part of this video, I told you about the objective function, about the benefits of simplex method and how to convert a minimization type simplex method to a equivalent maximization type and how to determine whether we need slack variables or surplus variables. And now in the second part of this video, I will tell you how to do the rest of the calculations by a shortcut technique. So let's start the video. So here is some revision for you. Our original objective function was minimize z or min z equals to 4x plus 7y plus 2z subjected to x plus y greater than or equals to 2, 2x plus z greater than or equals to 5 and x, y and z all greater than or equals to 0. So since our objective function is of minimization type, we need to convert into equivalent maximization type problem by changing the sign of the objective function. So our objective function is 4x plus 7 minus plus 2z. By changing the signs, we get max z star, which is opposite of pin z, equals to minus 4x minus 7y minus 2z, where the max z star equals to minus of min z. And since the left hand side is greater, since it has a greater than equals to sign, so we need to subtract something from the left hand side to get the equals to sign. So we will subtract something or some variables which are called the surplus variables. So we will subtract the variable p from our constraint number 1, this is the first constraint and variable q from our second constraint. So after subtracting the surplus variables p and q, we get max z star equals to minus 4x minus 7y minus 2z plus 0 into p plus 0 into q, where p and q are the surplus variables. As you may know, the surplus and the slack variables does not affect the objective function they are just used to get the equals to sign. Here we have got the equals to sign by introducing the surplus variables. And since they don't affect the objective function, they are multiplied with 0. So by subtracting the surplus variable p from the constraint 1, we get x plus y, x plus y and z is not present. So 0 into z minus p plus 0 into q equals to 2. This is our equation number 1. And this is the standard form of writing the equations where the variables present are written as it is and the variables which are not present are multiplied with 0. Our second constraint is 2x plus z greater than or equals to 5. And here the y variable is not present. So we will write it 2x plus y is not present, so 0 into y plus z as it is plus 0 into p minus q equals to 5 and this is our equation number 2. Subjected to x, y, z, p and q all greater than or equals to 0. They are called the non-negative constraints. That means their value can be 0 or greater than 0 but non less than 0 or non-negative. So by subtracting the surplus variables p and q, we have got the standard form of equations and now we will find out the matrix form of the equations. We will write the standard form into equivalent matrix form. If you want to know more about the matrix form, you can watch my videos on Gauss elimination method and Gauss Jordan elimination method. So in matrix form, the first row is obtained by writing all the coefficients of the equation number 1. Similarly, in matrix form, the second row is obtained by writing all the coefficients of the equation number 2. So let's find out 1x plus 1y plus 0z minus 1p plus 0q. By writing all the coefficients 1, 1, 0, minus 1 and 0. Similarly, the row 2 can be obtained by 2x 
प्लस जीरो वाई प्लस वन जेड प्लस जीरो पी माइनस वन क्यू सो द रो टू ऑफ द मैट्रिक्स इज टू जीरो वन जीरो एंड माइनस वन बाय राइटिंग द कोफिशियंट्स ऑफ द वेरिएबल्स एक्स वाई जेड पी एंड क्यू इन टू ऑल द वेरिएबल्स इन टू मैट्रिक्स फॉर्म दिस इज कॉल्ड द कॉलम मैट्रिक्स इच है ओनली वन कॉलम सो द वेरिएबल्स आर एक्स वाई जेड पी एंड क्यू इक्वल्स टू द राइट हैंड साइड सो द राइट हैंड साइड इज टू एंड फाइव दे आर रिटर्न हियर एंड नाउ एज यू कैन सी द वेरिएबल्स वाई एंड जेड आर फॉर्मिंग एन आइडेंटिटी मैट्रिक्स विच इज गिवेन इन द parentheses an identity matrix is a matrix where the diagonal elements are one and every other element in the matrix are all zeros so here the variables y and z are forming the identity matrix and they are our basic variables and they will go into the basic variable column of our simplex table so we construct the matrix form to find out the basic variables and the basic vectors and also the matrix form gives us the initial basic feasible solution or ibfs which is given here so our basic variables are y and z so y is 1 which is related to the value in the right hand side so we can say the y is 2 and the z is 1 which is related to the right hand side value 5 so we can say z is 5 and this is our initial basic feasible solution or ibfs and now by taking all the variables other than the basic variables in equation 1 and equation 2 equals to 0 so by taking all non basic variables equals to 0 and basic variables we have already got the values so that gives us x equals to 0 y equals to 2 and z equals to 5 and now we'll put the values of our initial basic feasible solution into our objective function which is right now max z so max z star equals to minus 4x minus 7y minus 2z which is written here so by putting x equals to 0 y equals to 2 and z equals to 5 we get the max z star value equals to minus 24 so our initial basic feasible solution out of ibfs is max z star equals to minus 24 this is called initial solution because this is our first solution without constructing the simplex table this is called the basic solution because the we get the values from our basic variables y and z in this case it is called the feasible solution because the values for y and z are greater than 0 remember we have constrained that the values of x y z p and q must be 0 or greater than 0 so since the values 2 and 5 are greater than 0 this is the feasible solution so our initial basic feasible solution or ibfs is max z star equals to minus 24 and now we will construct a simplex table and we'll check whether we can decrease the value from minus 24 to some extent